you would not need your uh, individual insurance policy in, in that scenario. Councilor Costello. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to follow up on my colleague, Councilman Wiggins, because I, uh, as an engineer, I'm uh, black and white, right and left. Uh, there's no gray area. I have four colleagues here that are attorneys. I have an attorney uh, director sitting right here. We have a city attorney, so I'm not going to get into arguments with them. But uh, to me, it's the it's a logical thing that we have commercial coverage when the app is on. One of my amendments that follows this discussion will define that they get in, as soon as they get in the car, they put the app on if they're going to be using the car for ride sharing purposes. So I think I think that fills the gap. The commercial insurance company from wrong director, but commercial insurance is in place while they're doing a vehicle for hire. Is that correct? That's correct. And correct me if I'm wrong. Well, no, you, you don't know. But we don't know that once they stop doing a vehicle for hire for that day, we don't know if they have their personal insurance. We just assume that. But there is some type of insurance coverage for that person's own vehicle in case they get into an accident. That's their life. But for coveraging the, the driver while they're doing ride sharing and the passenger, there is commercial insurance in place. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Councilor Moran. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question with regard to uh, uh, presumption of course of scope um, relative to the taxi cab industry. Because they do have the commercial policy now, is it a presumption? Say, for instance, they're not, they don't have a fare that they're, that they're picking up their kids from school in the taxi cab. Is that is there an automatic presumption because they are actually in the vehicle that it is a commercial activity and thus, if an accident happened, uh, would be deemed under, uh, admissible under a commercial policy as engaging in course and scope? Or would the, that commercial policy, and it is a self-insured policy, would they have the occasion to deny the coverage because they're not actually engaged in the actual commercial activity of, uh, of, of livery? The brokers that I spoke to said that those vehicles, because they are, they are vehicles for hire, they're livery vehicles, that, that insurance would cover them even when they're picking up their kids from school if they run over somebody on their way. It has nothing to do with the force of <coughs> them. Okay, so it's actually thank you. Councilor Payton. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I hope the I'm uh, <coughs> reading the correct amendment. Uh, Council Member Costello is one marked exhibit seven. Oh, and uh, and and one 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 C one uh, talks about liability uh, rising or caused by the operation of transportation network vehicle for incidents involving a driver from the time a driver is matched and accepts a trip uh, through the drop-off. And then, uh, I believe Director Pius has suggested there's 24-7 liability because down at the bottom, in 3-1, uh, it says a transportation network driver should log onto the transportation network company's internet and enabled application or digital platform showing that the driver is available to pick up passengers immediately upon entering his or her transportation network vehicle with the intent to provide service and although I think maybe there's an effort to require uh, the liability the commercial insurance liability begin when the when the driver begins driving the liability is only stated to begin when the driver is matched and so perhaps an amendment needs to be made with this last section to uh, line up the uh, item 3-1 with uh, what's in 1-C-1 the, the, I can't speak to Council Member Costello's amendment. The ordinance as it is presented, the substitute ordinance that we presented to Council, requires that, that commercial coverage to be in existence whether they've been matched with a fare or not. If they're driving around with the app on, the commercial coverage is there. Okay, so you're saying you've already done that. that That's if, already if, in if, the if the driver turns on his or her app when he drives out of his driveway or her, her driveway, then there's coverage. Yes, sir, because at the time they turn on their app, they're, they're clearly indicating their intent to be available for service. Okay, and I guess also to uh, Mr. Feldman's issue, if somebody is driving around even with the app on, if a 
it's not considered, if he's, he's not really going somewhere to pick up something, he's not in the course and scope. I mean, uh, I mean that issue is litigated all the time. I don't think we can stay with any definiteness whether the result would be whether the co there's actually coverage there. The, the words of the ordinance say that if the app is on, his intent is that he's available for business. So as far as we're concerned, that's the course, course and scope of his employment. So in, in your view, this amendment in 3.1 takes care of that and establishes 24-7 coverage? The one that, that went, we already require 24-7 coverage in the substitute ordinance. Again, with that combination of commercial and personal when they're not operating. Councilmember Costello, with his amendments, was intending to, one, make sure that they turn on the app, make it, make it a requirement that they turn on the app as soon as they get in that vehicle and intend to provide service. And, uh, and it also prohibits them from accepting hails. And if in any event they accept a hail or make themselves available for a hail, the company must inform us and that driver will be, his license will be revoked. And, and I didn't want to speak for you, Councilmember Costello, so if, if there's something else you wanted to say. Correct, you do just fine, thank you. Councilmember Bradford. Hey, thank you. The amendment on the floor is, uh, is Martin's uh, amendment, but it's certainly in a strict bunch of time with the previous Costello. I mean, I, I want to just take maybe uh, uh, two minutes and, and emphasize the importance of the Martin's Amendment on the table now. It, it protects citizens and it closes the gap. As an example, the Costello Amendment, quote, it, well, I don't want to quote it, but paraphrase it, it extends insurance coverage until the passenger arrives at his or her final destination. That's a pretty good quote. It's a pretty good quote. Okay. So, so if you get to your destination and you are unloading or, 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 or you're loading somebody who has a disability and they suffer an injury and you at your desk, who, who covers that? If, if there's an equipment malfunction, who, who, who covers that? Where's the coverage? See, this is the type of gap that we're leaving out there. Costello's amendment has not been violated because I, I, I had it on until I got to my destination. But, but the wheelchair lift or some component associated with the vehicle malfunction, it fails, and a disabled person is injured. That's the gap that we need covered here. That's why the Martin Amendment takes away all of that. Don't leave that person out there. The other point, uh, Director Pius, are, are you aware that the small cap companies have commercial insurance already? Yes, sir. Okay, then the comment that my colleague made to my left about if we were to pass the Martin's Amendment, it would put an additional burden on small cap companies and it would hurt them unduly. That's not reflective of what the actual situation is then, is it? It would hurt the drivers unduly. Because, because again, this amendment would require the onus to be on the drivers, not on the permittees. Okay. Okay, but let's, let's go back to my Martin's umbrella close to gap citizen protection thing. Do you not concur that gap insurance in this scenario, the one I laid out about the disabled person being injured due to equipment failure in the car, the vehicle, but they were at destination so the insurance didn't cover, how do we, how do we address that or should we not address that today? So you're saying as the as the person is being is is, is getting out of the car, the yes, equipment malfunctions and he gets hurt. Yes. The insurance should still should still cover that because that's still part of the trip. That's Costello's amendment. I, I just read. He says uh, the insurance coverage until the passenger arrives at his or her final destination. I've arrived. And you were See, my, injured my, 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 as alighting from the car. Yes. Right. It doesn't matter whether the app is on or off. You, it, you've reached your final destination as you were getting out of the car. You got hurt. There should be coverage. Yeah. It, 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 it does matter. And, and I don't think that we're going to solve this at the table, but I'm convinced that I've heard enough of that. Uh, because Costello's amendment is, 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 is pretty clear, and we passed this one already, that the coverage is extended until the passenger arrives at his or her final destination. And I'm going to go in and argue that, no, ma'am, you're not covered. No, sir, you're not covered because you had arrived at your final destination. You, you had arrived. So this injury is not covered by the insurance. And see, and I don't know how we get around it unless we say, Dave Martin, thanks for your amendment. 
You put post gap, you close the gap, and you put protection in place. That's what the Martin Amendment does. I yield. Thank you. Okay, I'll also remember starting. I guess, I just have, it just right there is another question for me. Are, we, are you questioning Councilor Costello's amendment that we should further define deliver, you know, arrival? I mean, I, I, I don't want to get into this, and it just, it just seems to be that, are we, are we looking for coverage? Are we looking for solutions, or are we looking to, to tear down something? I want, to, I want to know what the solution is. What is it we're looking for in, in moving this forward to make sure we have coverage? The Martin's Amendment, <laughs> that's the solution. 